fundamentals of nursing too. Question 1. The most appropriate nursing order for a patient who develops dyspnea and shortness of breath would be A. Maintain the patient on strict bed rest at all times. B. Maintain the patient in an orthopneic position as needed. C. Administer oxygen by venturi mask at 24% as needed. D. Allow a one-hour rest period between activities. Answer B. When a patient develops dyspnea and shortness of breath, the orthopneic position encourages maximum chest expansion and keeps the abdominal ligands from pressing against the diaphragm, thus improving ventilation. Bed rest and oxygen by Venturi mask at 24% would improve oxygenation of the tissues and cells but must be ordered by a physician. Allowing for rest periods decreases the possibility of hypoxia. Question 2. The nurse observes that Mr. Adams begins to have increased difficulty breathing. She elevates the head of the bed to the high fowler position, which decreases his respiratory distress. The nurse documents this breathing as A. Tachypnea B. Apnea C. Orthopnea D. Hyperventilation Answer C. Orthopnea is difficulty of breathing except in the upright position. Tachypnea is rapid respiration characterized by quick, shallow breaths. Apnea is normal respiration, quiet, rhythmic, and without effort. Answer B. When a patient develops dyspnea and shortness of breath, the orthopneic position. Question 2. The nurse observes that Mr. Adams begins to have increased difficulty breathing. She elevates the head of the bed to the high fowler position, which decreases his respiratory distress. The nurse documents this breathing as A. Tachypnea B. Answer C. Orthopnea is difficulty of breathing except in the upright position. Question 5. The physician orders a maintenance dose of 5,000 units of subcutaneous heparin and anticoagulant daily. Nursing responsibilities for Mrs. Mitchell now include A. Reviewing daily activated partial thromboplastin time APTT and pro thrombin time. B. Reporting an APTT above 45 seconds to the physician. C. Assessing the patient for signs and symptoms of frank and occult bleeding. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the identified nursing responsibilities are pertinent when a patient is receiving heparin.
The normal activated partial thromboplastin time is 16 to 25 seconds and the normal pro thrombin time is 12 to 15 seconds. These levels must remain within 2 to 2 and 1 half the normal levels. All patients receiving anticoagulant therapy must be observed for signs and symptoms of frank and occult bleeding including hemorrhage, hypertension, tachycardia, tachypnea, restlessness, pallor, cold and clammy skin, thirst and confusion. Blood pressure should be measured every four hours and the patient should be instructed to report promptly any bleeding that occurs with tooth brushing, bowel movements urination or heavy prolonged menstruation. Answer C. Orthopnea is difficulty of breathing except in the upright position. Tachypnea is rapid respiration characterized by quick, shallow breaths. Apnea is normal respiration, quiet, rhythmic, and without effort. Question 5. The physician orders a maintenance dose of 5,000 units of subcutaneous heparin and anticoagulant daily. Nursing responsibilities for Mrs. Mitchell now include A. Reviewing daily activated partial thromboplastin time APTT and pro thrombin time. Answer D. All of the identified nursing responsibilities are pertinent when a patient is. Answer D. Maslow, who defined a need as a satisfaction whose absence causes illness, considered oxygen to be the most important physiologic need. Without it, human life could not exist. According to this theory, other physiologic needs, including food, water, elimination, shelter, rest, and sleep, Activity and temperature regulation must be met before proceeding to the next hierarchical levels on psychosocial needs. Question 8. The family of an accident victim who has been declared brain dead seems amenable to organ donation. What should the nurse do? A. Discourage them from making a decision until their grief has eased. B. Listen to their concerns and answer their questions honestly. C. Encourage them to sign the consent form right away. D. Tell them the body will not be available for a way call funeral. Answer D. All of the identified nursing responsibilities are pertinent when a patient is receiving heparin. The normal activated partial thromboplastin time is 16 to 25 seconds and the normal pro thrombin time is 12 to 15 seconds. These levels must remain within 2 to 2 and 1 half the normal levels. All patients receiving anticoagulant therapy must be observed for signs and answer D. Maslow, who defined a need as a satisfaction whose absence causes illness. Question 8. The family of an accident victim who has been declared brain dead seems amenable to organ donation. What should the nurse do? A. Discourage them from making a decision until their grief has eased. B. Listen to their concerns. Question 5. 
the physician orders a maintenance dose of 5,000 units of subcutaneous heparinin anticoagulant daily. Nursing responsibilities for Mrs. Mitchell now include a. Reviewing daily activated partial thromboplastin time APTT and pro thrombin time. b. Reporting an APTT above 45 seconds to the physician. c. Assessing the patient for signs and symptoms of frank and occult bleeding. d. All of the above. Answer b. When a patient develops dyspnea and shortness of breath, the orthopneic position answer C. Orthopnea is difficulty of breathing except in the upright position. Tachypnea is rapid respiration characterized by quick, shallow breaths. Apnea is normal respiration, quiet, rhythmic, and without effort. Question 11. If nurse administers an injection to a patient who refuses that injection, she has committed A. Assault and battery B. Negligence C. Malpractice D. None of the above Question 8. The family of an accident victim who has been declared brain dead seems amenable to all. Answer A. Assault is the unjustifiable attempt or threat to touch or injure another person. Battery is the unlawful touching of another person or the carrying out of threatened physical harm. Thus, any act that a nurse performs on a patient against his will is considered assault and battery. Answer B. When a patient develops dyspnea and shortness of breath. The orthopneic position encourages maximum chest expansion and keeps the abdominal organs from pressing against the diaphragm, thus improving ventilation. Bed rest and oxygen by Venturi mask at 24% would improve oxygenation of the tissues and cells but must answer C. Orthopnea is difficulty of breathing except in the upright position. Answer A. Oral communication that injures an individual's reputation is considered slander. Written communication that does the same is considered libel. Question 13. A registered nurse reaches to answer the telephone on a busy pediatric unit, momentarily turning away from a three-month-old infant she has been weighing. The infant falls off the scale, suffering a skull fracture. The nurse could be charged with a. Defamation B. Assault C. Battery D. Malpractice Answer A. Assault is the unjustifiable attempt or threat to touch or injure another person. Battery is the unlawful touching of another person or the carrying out of threatened physical harm. Thus, any act that a nurse performs on a patient against his will is considered assault and battery. Answer C. Orthopnea is difficulty of breathing except in the upright position. Tachypnea is rapid respiration characterized by quick, shallow breaths. Apnea is normal respiration, quiet, rhythmic, and without effort. Question 2. 
The nurse observes that Mr. Adams begins to have increased difficulty breathing. She elevates the head of the bed to the high fowler position, which decreases his respiratory distress. The nurse documents this breathing as A. Tachypnea B. Apnea C. Orthopnea D. Hyperventilation Question 8. The family of an accident victim who has been declared brain dead seems amenable to organ donation. What should the nurse do? A. Discourage them from making a decision until their grief has eased. B. Listen to their concerns and answer their questions honestly. C. Encourage them to sign the consent form right away. D. Tell them the body will not be available for a way call funeral. Answer A. Assault is the unjustifiable attempt or threat to touch or injure another person. Battery is the unlawful touching of another person or the carrying out of threatened physical harm. Thus, Any act that a nurse performs on a patient against his will is considered assault and battery. Question 8. The family of an accident victim who has been declared brain dead seems amenable to organ donation. What should the nurse do? A. Discourage them from making a decision until their grief has eased. B. Listen to their concerns and answer their questions honestly. C. Encourage them to sign the consent form right away. D. Tell them the body will not be available for a way call funeral. Question 11. If nurse administers an injection to a patient who refuses that injection, she has committed A. Assault and battery B. Negligence C. Malpractice D. None of the above Answer A. Assault is the unjustifiable attempt or threat to touch or injure another person. Battery is the unlawful touching of another person or the carrying out of threatened physical harm. Thus, any act that a nurse performs on a patient against his will is considered assault and battery. Question 18. High pitched gurgles head over the right lower quadrant are A. A sign of increased bowel motility. B. A sign of decreased bowel motility. C. Normal bowel sounds. D. A sign of abdominal cramping. Question 11. 
if nurse administers an injection to a patient who refuses that injection she has committed. A. Assault and battery. B. Negligence. C. Malpractice. D. None of the above. Question 8. The family of an accident victim who has been declared brain dead seems amenable to organ donation. What should the nurse do? A. Discourage them from making a decision until their grief has eased. B. Listen to their concerns and answer their questions. Answer A. Oral communication that injures an individual's reputation is considered slander. Written communication that does the same is considered libel. Question 8. The family of an accident victim who has been declared brain dead seems amenable to organ donation. What should the nurse do? A. Discourage them from making a decision until their grief has eased. B. Listen to their concerns and answer their questions honestly. C. Encourage them to sign the consent form right away. D. Tell them the body will not be available for a way call funeral. Question 21. During a Romberg test, the nurse asks the patient to assume which position? A. Sitting. B. Standing. C. Genupectoral. D. Trenlinburg. Question 11. If nurse administers an injection to a patient who refuses that injection, she answer B. During a Romberg test, which evaluates the sensory or cerebellar ataxia, the patient must stand with feet together and arms resting at the sides, first with eyes open, then with eyes closed. The need to move the feet apart to maintain this stance is an abnormal finding. Question 5. The physician orders a maintenance dose of 5,000 units of subcutaneous heparin and anticoagulant daily. Nursing responsibilities for Mrs. Mitchell now include A. Reviewing daily activated partial thromboplastin time APTT and pro thrombin Answer D. All of the identified nursing responsibilities are pertinent when a patient is Question 21. During a Romberg test, the nurse asks the patient to assume which position? A. Sitting. B. Question 11. If nurse administers an injection to a patient who refuses that injection, she has committed. A. Assault and battery. B. Negligence. C. Malpractice. D. None of the above. Answer B. During a Romberg test, which evaluates the sensory or cerebellar artics. Answer D. A slightly elevated temperature in the immediate preoperative or post operative period may result from the lack of fluids before surgery rather than from infection. Anxiety will not cause an elevated temperature. Hypothermia is an abnormally low body temperature. Answer D. All of the identified nursing responsibilities are pertinent when a patient is receiving heparin.
The normal activated partial thromboplastin time is 16 to 25 seconds and the normal pro thrombin time is 12 to 15. Question 5. The physician orders a maintenance dose of 5,000 units of subcutaneous heparin. Question 11. If nurse administers an injection to a patient who refuses that injection, she has committed A. Assault and battery B. Negligence Answer B. During a Romberg test, which evaluates the sensory or cerebellar ataxia. The patient must stand with feet together and arms resting at the sides, first with eyes open, then with eyes closed. The need to move the feet apart to maintain this stance is an abnormal finding. Answer D. A slightly elevated temperature in the immediate preoperative or postoperative. Answer D. All of the identified. Question 5. The physician orders a maintenance dose of 5,000 units of subcutaneous heparin and anticoagulant daily. Nursing responsibilities for Mrs. Mitchell now include A. Reviewing daily activated partial thromboplastin time APTT and pro thrombin time. Question 11. If nurse administers an injection to a patient who refuses that injection, she... Answer D. A slightly elevated temperature in the immediate preoperative or postoperative period may result from the lack of fluids before surgery rather than from infection. Anxiety will not cause an elevated temperature. Hypothermia is an abnormally low body temperature. Answer B. During a Romberg test, which evaluates the sensory or cerebellar ataxia. Question 8. The family of an accident victim who has been declared brain dead seems amenable to organ donation. What should the nurse do? A. Discourage them from making a decision until their grief has eased. B. Listen to their concerns and answer their questions honestly. C. Encourage them to sign the consent form right away. D. Tell them the body will not be available for a way call funeral. Question 11. If nurse administers an injection to a patient who refuses that injection, she has committed A. Assault and battery B. Negligence C. Malpractice D. None of the above Answer D. A slightly elevated temperature in the immediate preoperative or postoperative period may result from the lack of fluids before surgery rather than from infection. Anxiety will not cause an elevated temperature. Hypothermia is an abnormally low body temperature. Answer B. During a Romberg test, which evaluates the sensory or cerebellar ataxia, the patient must stand with feet together and arms resting at the sides, first with eyes open, then with eyes closed. The need to move the feet apart to maintain this stance is an abnormal finding. Question 8. The family of an accident victim who has been declared brain dead seems amenable to all. Question 21. During a Romberg test, the nurse asks the patient to assume which position? A. 
sitting. B. Standing. C. Genupectoral. D. Trenlinburg. Answer A. Oral communication that injures an individual's reputation is considered slander. Written communication that does the same is considered libel. Question 18. High-pitched gurgles head over the right lower quadrant are A. Answer. A. Adequate hydration thins and loosens pulmonary secretions and also helps to replace fluids lost from elevated temperature, diaphoresis, dehydration and dyspnea. High humidity air and chest physiotherapy help liquefy and mobilize secretions. Question 8. The family of an accident victim who has been declared brain dead seems amenable to organ donation. What should the nurse do? A. Discourage them from making a decision until their grief has eased. B. Listen to their concerns. Question 21. During a Romberg test, the nurse asks the patient to assume which position. Answer. A. Oral communication that injures an individual's reputation is considered slander. Written communication that does the same. Question 18. High-pitched gurgles head over the right lower quadrant are A. A sign of increased bowel motility. B. A sign of decreased bowel motility. C. Normal bowel sounds. D. A sign of abdominal cramping. Answer A. Adequate hydration thins and loosens pulmonary secretions and also helps. Answer D. All of the identified nursing responsibilities are pertinent when a patient is receiving heparin. The normal activated partial thromboplastin time is 16 to 25 seconds and the normal pro thrombin time is 12 to 15 seconds. These levels must remain within 2 to question 5. The physician orders a maintenance dose of 5,000 units of subcutaneous heparin and anticoagulant daily. Nursing responsibilities for Mrs. Mitchell now include A. Reviewing daily activated partial thromboplastin time APTT and pro thrombin time. B. Reporting an APTT above 45 seconds to the physician. C. Assessing the patient for signs and symptoms of frank and occult bleeding. D. Question 18. High-pitched gurgles head over the right lower quadrant are A. A sign of increased bowel motility. B. A sign of decreased bowel motility. Answer. A. Adequate hydration thins and loosens pulmonary secretions and also helps to replace fluids lost from elevated temperature, diaphoresis, dehydration and dyspnea. High humidity air and chest physiotherapy help liquefy and mobilize secretions. Answer D. All of the identified nursing responsibilities are pertinent when a patient is re Question 5. The physician orders a maintenance dose of 5,000 units of subcutaneous heparin and anticoagulant daily. Nursing responsibilities for Mrs. Mitchell now include A. 
Review. Answer. A. Oral communication that injures an individual's reputation is considered slander. Written communication that does the same is considered libel. Answer. C. A hospitalized surgical patient leaving his room for the first time fears rejection and others staring at him, so he should not walk alone. Accompanying him will offer moral support, enabling him to face the rest of the world. Patients should begin ambulation as soon as possible after surgery to decrease complications and to regain strength and confidence. Waiting to consult a physical therapist is unnecessary. Answer D. A slightly elevated temperature in the immediate preoperative or post operative period may result from the lack of fluids before surgery rather than from infection. Anxiety will not cause an elevated temperature. Hypothermia is an abnormally low body temperature. Question 21. During a Romberg test, the nurse asks the patient to assume which position? Answer. A. Thick, tenacious secretions, a dry, hacking cough, orthopnea, and shortness of breath are signs of ineffective airway clearance. Ineffective airway clearance related to dry, hacking cough is incorrect because the cough is not the reason for the ineffective airway clearance. Ineffective individual coping related to COPT is wrong because the etiology for a nursing diagnosis should not be a medical diagnosis COPT and because no data indicate that the patient is coping ineffectively. Pain related to immobilization of affected leg would be an appropriate nursing diagnosis for a patient with a leg fracture. Question 8. The family of an accident victim who has been declared brain dead seems amenable to O. Answer. D. A slightly elevated temperature in the immediate preoperative or post-operative period may result from the lack of fluids before surgery rather than from infection. Anxiety will not cause an elevated temperature. Hypothermia is an abnormally low body temperature. Answer. C. Orthopnea is difficulty of breathing except in the upright position. Tachypnea is rapid respiration characterized by quick, shallow breaths. Apnea is normal respiration, quiet, rhythmic, and without effort. Answer. B. When a patient develops dyspnea and shortness of breath, the orthopneic position
Answer A. Assault is the unjustifiable attempt or threat to touch or injure another person. Battery is the unlawful touching of another person or the carrying out of threatened physical harm. Thus, any act that a nurse performs on a patient against his will is considered assault and battery. Question 40. After one week of hospitalization, Mr. Gray develops hypokalemia. Which of the following is the most significant symptom of his disorder? A. Lethargy. B. Increased pulse rate and blood pressure. C. Muscle weakness. D. Muscle irritability. Answer B. When a patient develops dyspnea and shortness of breath, the orthopneic position encourages maximum chest expansion and keeps the abdominal ligaments from pressing against the diaphragm, thus improving ventilation. Bed rest and oxygen by Venturi mask at 24% would improve oxygenation of the tissues and cells but must be ordered by a physician. Allowing for rest. P Answer A. Oral communication that injures an individual's reputation is considered slander. Question 21. During a Romberg test, the nurse asks the patient to assume which position? A. Sitting. B. Standing. C. Genupectoral. D. Trenlinburg. Answer B. When a patient develops dyspnea and shortness of breath, the orthopneic position encourages maximum chest expansion and keeps the abdominal ligaments from pressing against the diaphragm, thus improving ventilation. Bed rest and oxygen by Venturi mask at 24% would improve oxygenation of the tissues and cells. But question 43. Examples of patients suffering from impaired awareness include all of the following except A. A semi-conscious or over-fatigued patient B. A disoriented or confused patient C. A patient who cannot care for himself at home D. A patient demonstrating symptoms of drugs or alcohol withdrawal Answer A. Assault is the unjustifiable attempt or threat to touch or injure another person. Battery is the unlawful touching of another person or the carrying out of threatened physical harm. Thus, 
Any act that a nurse performs on a patient against his will is considered assault and battery. Question 40. After one week of hospitalization, Mr. Gray develops hypokalemia. Answer, D. A slightly elevated temperature in the immediate preoperative or post-operative period may result from the lack of fluids before surgery rather than from infection. Anxiety will not cause an elevated temperature. Hypothermia is an abnormally low body temperature. Answer, A. Assault is the unjustifiable attempt or threat to touch or injure another person. Battery is the unlawful touching of another person or the carrying out of threatened physical harm. Thus, any act that a nurse performs on a patient against his will is considered assault and battery. Question 21. During a Romberg test, the nurse asks the patient to assume which position? A. Sitting. B. Standing. C. Genupectoral. D. Trenlinburg. Answer, D. Aging decreases elasticity of the blood vessels, which leads to increased peripheral resistance and decreased blood flow. These changes, in turn, increase the workload of the left ventricle. Question 8. The family of an accident victim who has been declared brain dead seems amenable to organ donation. What should the nurse do? A. Discourage them from making a decision until their grief has eased. B. Listen to their concerns and answer their questions honestly. C. Encourage. Answer. A. Assault is the unjustifiable attempt or threat to touch or injure another person. Answer. D. A slightly elevated temperature in the immediate preoperative or post-operative period may result from the lack of fluids before surgery rather than from infection. Anxiety will not cause an elevated temperature. Hypothermia is an abnormally low body temperature. Question 48. The nurse's most important legal responsibility after a patient's death in a hospital is A. Obtaining a consent of an autopsy. B. Notifying the coroner or medical examiner. C. Labeling the corpse appropriately. D. Ensuring that the attending physician issues the death certification. Answer. B. When a patient develops dyspnea and shortness of breath, the orthopneic position. Answer, C. 
Orthopnea is difficulty of breathing except in the upright position. Tachypnea is rapid respiration characterized by quick, shallow breaths. Apnea is normal respiration, quiet, rhythmic and without effort. Answer D. A slightly elevated temperature in the immediate preoperative or post-operative. Question 48. The nurse's most important legal responsibility after a patient's death in a hospital is A. Obtaining a consent of an autopsy. B. Notifying the coroner or medical examiner. C. Labeling the corpse appropriately. D. Ensuring that the attending physician issues the death certification. Answer. A. Assault is the unjustifiable attempt or threat to touch or injure another person. Battery is the unlawful touching of another person or the carrying out of threatened physical harm. Thus, any act that a nurse performs on a patient against his will is considered assault and battery. Question 21. During a Romberg test, the nurse asks the patient to assume which position? Answer. A. Ensuring the patient's safety is the most essential action at this time. The other nursing actions may be necessary but are not a major priority. Question 2. The nurse observes that Mr. Adams begins.